UFC Bantamweight, Brett Johns. Thank you so much for joining me again. Uh, the last time we spoke, you were getting ready for UFC Lincoln. Now you are getting ready for UFC Fight Island. How are you doing? I'm very well, yeah. It's a bit of a different circumstance, I guess you could say. We're going from the cold, misty air of Lincoln, Nebraska to the 40-degree heat in uh, in Abu Dhabi. You know, it's nice, man. It's a, it's a different... Um, it's a different environment. I've never actually fought that side of the world. You know, I usually go to the States and, and the UK maybe. So Abu Dhabi is a bit of an experience. And I think this is one of their moments that if I didn't take, I'd probably regret it further on down the line. And I'm glad it's, I'm glad it's still Montel. Um, Montel's a, st- a really stiff test. Really, really good guy. Really tricky. And um, I'm just happy to keep the fight. Your teammate, Jack Shore, you know, they just announced that his opponent has the coronavirus but you know he has the coronavirus tested positive have you talked to him since yeah i spoke to jack a few times yeah you know um man J- jack is like me he's he's buzzing to get out there and he wants to just go out there and it was i think he might have been a little concerned because obviously you know J- this is this is jack's fourth opponent for fight thailand so i can understand jack's frustration but um he's buzzing he's really happy with the matchup he's got um I think he's fighting a guy called Aaron Phillips, who's a you know respected guy. Of course, he is. You know, the other day he's in the UFC for for, for you know I I'm not sure if he's had any previous fights there, but he's got a good little record and um, he he is definitely a test for Jack. But man, I'm 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 looking at Jack Shaw at the minute in the gym and I I can't see anybody outside that that top 15 that's going to cause him trouble at the minute. It's just not going to happen. The guys an absolute animal and I'm, I'm very thankful that we get to fight you know we're not on the same card but we're, we're more or less on the same sort of like experience of fight island and it's um yeah it's an honor man to be in the same card as jack especially because i feel like especially where we're from in wales you know the ufc is um, is quite new to everybody here and we have four representatives john phillips jack marshman you know jack shaw and myself it's just nice to be alongside another Welshman out in that fight, Thailand, and John John Phillips on the same card as him. It's exciting times, man, and um, everybody's got stiff competition, and um, you know, looking forward to seeing what happens. The circumstances surrounding Jack, you know, what happened to him in the last twenty four hours, does that kind of change your approach to the upcoming fights? Even not just this fight, but maybe fights further down the line where it's like, you don't know what's going to happen. Things could change in a matter of seconds. I'll just put into perspective what Jack's had to go through. So Jack originally had to fight a guy who was a orthodox fighter, quite tall. His next fight was a, was a Southpaw Mexican. And then his third fight was Anderson de Santos, who is a orthodox Brazilian, completely different style to the first original opponent. And now Aaron Phillips, who is also a really tall southpaw. You know, he's had to go through the, the a different experience. But man, Jack is so game for anybody. Like he he's always prepared. He's like myself. We don't really take time off training, but Jack is uh, he's ready for this next test and. Um, it's just been amazing to share camp with another fellow UFC fighter. I've never done that before. I've never shared a camp with another UFC fighter, and especially someone who's the same weight. It's, it's been fantastic. And uh, mentally, I think it's a little bit different to the fight with Link, for me and Montel and Lincoln. I, I feel like we've had more time to grow as a as a, as a unit and, and as a team. And um, I'm buzzing. You know, everybody at um, Show MMA is, is, is ready for this next fight. And Everybody's really supportive, and everybody who who's helped out, we're very grateful, grateful too, you know. And um, also, I have another team that I use, which is the KGB in Port Albert with James Wallace. You know, a lot of people have had to sacrifice a lot, especially these last few weeks while this this world is has gone crazy. You know, there's still people out there willing to help, and um, we're very thankful. And um, it's it's going to be amazing for sure. You know, this is going to be challenging times. But, uh, you know, I think after this is over, when we sit down and look back, it'll be a, a really good positive thought. The last time you were getting ready for Montel, you spent some time in the gym and then you went on lockdown. This time you were in lockdown and then you got back into the gym. It, it's, 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 it's a weird set of circumstances, man, for you prepare for this guy. 
John, I think I'd, I'd prefer it this way, though, rather than the other way. You know, I had a really good start to the camp with uh, with Montel back in back in April time. And then, uh, and then obviously, three weeks where I was just indoors. And I was telling some guys that, like, my, I had two options. I think everybody in the world had two options when it comes to quarantine. You can either keep fit or you can go fat. It's up to you. Or, or get bigger or, or relax, I guess you could say. But for me, I felt like I, I generated so much momentum for that first fight with Montel. I thought, why waste the opportunity of trying to make a difference to myself? You know, I wanted to change my... First things first, I wanted to get my body weight down. I think sometimes I, I between fights, I go too big. So I wanted to spend the time in quarantine to kind of keep my weight down. And just for people that don't know, I, I'll, I'll get up to 170 if I'm not careful. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a big weight for someone who's a 35er, you know? Um, so 170 is way too big. And this camp, you know, I usually get to about, if, I, if I'm relaxed, enjoying myself, not, I haven't got a fight booked, I'll be about maybe... 160 to 165 maybe you know this this the last like eight weeks i am been heavier than 155 you know so i've really changed some things up and um it's, it's a big massive positive and like i said i i got three things i tend to use it would be my static bike my um my my punch bag bracket that i bought at the start of uh locked on and i go running 10 miles a day you know and I'm the fittest I've ever been. I'm the fittest that I think I've, I've ever stepped foot into a fight. And, you know, I don't, I, I don't have, I can say everything I want right now. It doesn't matter. You, you're going to see it come July 18th, you know. And um, the biggest difference really is I wouldn't say I've trained harder now than any other fight because I probably haven't. Because realistically, I train as hard as I do for this camp, for every camp. So I can't train any harder. But one thing I will say is that my, men, my mentally, I'm going in there with a complete different focus and um, I'm happy. I'm ready to go in there and buzz in and I want to show the world that it's um, that this this game, if, if you're happy, you can be very dangerous. A, a happy fighter is a dangerous fighter. You went back to the gym about a month ago, right, and started training with your training partners, getting ready. Did it take you a little bit of time to get back into the swing of things, grappling and, and sparring and, and getting the distance right? I'll be completely honest. I think fitness-wise, no. I think I think fitness-wise, I was already there. My cardio was really good. My weight was down. I felt like I was uh, one of the lucky ones that come back in 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 really good shape. You know what I mean? I'm, I was lucky like that. Um, but yeah, the sparring aspect of it, of the stand-up and getting your distance, and, and obviously the grappling and the scrambling, that did take a, a few sessions. Not not very long, mind. I, I, you know, at the end of the day, it wasn't very long. It was a couple of sessions. I might have felt slow and sluggish, and then bang, it just all come together. And not only have me and Jack peaked as like as like athletes, but I think we peaked as a team. I think everybody involved has been uh, has been amazing. Obviously, we've been like I said, it's been a month or so where professional athletes get to do certain amount of training back here in the UK, and um, yeah, we've taken full advantage of it. And uh, like I, I'm 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 really positive. I'm really happy, and I think. The, you know, at the end of the day, it's hard for me to kind of promote this the way I want to because realistically, it, it doesn't really matter what I, I'm telling you. It just matters on the night. I feel like, honestly, I feel like skill set wise, I'm better than Montel everywhere. But, you know, Montel is very tricky. And can he beat me? Of course he can. He, 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 you know, at the end of the day, you're at this level where anything can happen. And, um, Montel's got a lot of hype behind him at the minute. He, he's picked up three good wins. You know, I'm coming off a win myself, but um, I still feel like I need to make a good impression this fight. And um, the stars have aligned, put it that way. So if I lose July 18th, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit here and say that I give, my, give it my all. You know, and if I lost, I lost to a better man. And it's as simple as that. You know, I'm, I'm not... Um, you just go, like I like I told people before. I'm 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 not here to beat the next guy or the next guy after him. I'm just here to beat myself. I'm here to to become a better person, a better mixed martial artist. And um, the day where I can't become a better mixed martial mixed martial artist, and the last of my fault is the day I'll probably retire. You've been getting ready for Montel Jackson for the better part of this year, probably the longest camp for one particular fighter. And you were on lockdown, so it gives you a lot of time to think about him. And then when you get back into camp, did it change anything? Did anything change in your approach to get ready for him? Because 
even your coaches probably were thinking about him too while they were locked down. So did you see anything extra or was it just the same focus? To be honest, I, I, I studied him at the beginning of camp and then uh, and then then kind of stopped studying him obviously when the fight was called off. And then I've been I've been grappling my brother and my brother is like you know, he's he's a, a guy who has done judo for years, so he's got a strong, solid base. But his grappling, before I knew it was Montel, his grappling sort of style for MMA, my brother's is very, very unusual. He likes to grip a lot. He likes to grab a lot. He likes to keep contact and likes to hold the hand. And and as a grappler and as a and as an MMA fighter, it can, it can get really annoying, but it's a different style that I'm not used to. So we kind of like, been, I've been grappling my brother. We call it, we call it the Corona Cave. We've been grappling in the Corona Cave and um, he kind of like, Risk, he's risk grabbing me. He's being just really an orthodox, being really annoying. And I think when Montel grapples, he grapples just like that. So I feel like we've had a two a two week head start on him there because my brother and Montel are very similar with the way they grapple. The difference is my brother's about probably twenty or twenty five kilos heavier than the Montel. So I think strength wise, you know, I feel like I'm I'm a strong, really strong band with anyway. Um, fitness wise, you know. I, I I can't see anybody in that division being fitter than me. If I'm completely honest, I just I just I just can't, you know. Um, but I will I will give him the speed. No, he's a quick fighter. You know, he's got that quick one-two in the southpaw stance, and he's um, you know he he's very very good. And when he does hurt you, he goes in for the kill. And watching his barrage of punches in, in the last contest, you know he looks good. He's got power there, and it was just unfortunate he couldn't put Felipe Gerales away. But um, like, like I'm happy if he wants to fight in a telephone box. You know, I'm down for that as well. You know, it's, it's just that's me through and through. I've prepared every single aspect of this game. You know, yes, you can get caught, but um, everything I've done has been perfectly, perfectly sort of like trained into me for this fight. And I want to thank my three coaches, Carl Parker, Richard Shaw, and and, um, and James Wallace for for putting their input in as well. And um, yeah, there's nothing else I can really say about it. Really, you know, it's just been amazing. And um, I, but 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 then again, this camp has probably been the first ever camp I've done, and I've thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. You know, and I think looking back at this camp, this will be a major step in the right direction for my future fights. And um, may I'm in a good place. Even if I lose this fight, I can't I can't blame the camp. And I guess as a fighter. If you don't have a good camp, it kind of plays in your mind. But that that's not been the case for me. I've had a brilliant yeah. camp, and I'm I'm buzzing to get in and show it. And if and if everything does go wrong on the night, then okay, it went wrong, but it doesn't mean my my camp went wrong. I've 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 been really good with the guys there. I've generated some really good relationships with the boys I've been sparring, and um, that's what it's all about. It's not about the fights, I don't think, John. It's about the experiences you get in camp and the experience of traveling to these different places and taking her on and becoming a better human being. And um, I feel like I'm, I'm doing that, especially for this camp anyway. Definitely. Well, you go in there, you know, you get a win over Montel Jackson. Where do you think that puts you in the division, Montel? And you are kind of like on the edge of that top 15. Yeah, you know, I, I, to be honest, I was thinking that, uh, this last night, you know, I think Montel is probably definitely a win away from that top 15. Um you know, more so than me, probably. But then again, a win over Montel Jackson, I guess you could probably say that his wins go into my basket. But um, it's 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 a it's a top fifteen fight, I guess you could say. You know, this is it. This is to get back in that top fifteen. And for me personally, my my I kind of give myself these little goals, and I'm yet to achieve my one little goal, which is to to break into that UFC top ten. You know, um, I think. In years to come, you know, I got into the top 15. I got the 13th in the world after after beating Joe Soto. Then picked up two tough losses against Pedro Munoz and Alderman Sterling, who were absolute killers of that weight. Uh, and I obviously got kicked up the rankings and had a 17-month layoff. And obviously, we've had to kind of basically start again. And the win over Tony Gravely was a, was a big win. You know, I think a lot of people didn't really recognize how good Tony Gravely was previously to the UFC winning multiple you know world championships and um, he's a great guy Tony is and I know he's he's made some changes in his camp going to American top team now and you know the, 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 the you know at the end of the day the sky's the limit for that guy and um, getting a win over him probably didn't look as good 
then, but it'll after his next couple of fights, you'll see how good Tony Gravy really is. And to be honest, myself, I don't feel like it was was the best performance that I give, but uh, we come away with a win, so I was lucky against Gravy to get the win and, and not feel my best, you know. All right, I got two more questions for you. The what well, the first one is uh about your UFC contract. I saw something about this could be your last fight on on this contract. Is, am I right or am I wrong? No, that, I think you're right. This this is the this would be the last US, the fight on the contract. Um, I had I had three fights. Uh, I fought um, Quano Quack in in Belfast in 2016. I was meant to fight Ian Entwistle in London, but that fight got pulled, so it wasn't actually a contracted fight. So. I fought Morales July 27th in Scotland, then fought um, Joe Soto in Vegas December 2017. So I didn't actually have my fourth fight on my, my first contract. They wanted to renegotiate after the, the, the third fight. And then Alderman Sterling was my first fight in the second contract. So I fought Alderman, Pedro, Gravely. Now Montel is the last fight on this contract. And... Um, it's going to be interesting to see. Obviously, I feel like I need to make a good impression and and all, and all that jazz. But um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not I'm not really looking like that far ahead. Like I said, I'm just concentrating on on uh, Montel himself. And you know, obviously, I want to get that next contract signed, sealed, and get done and dusted. Maybe get a, paid a little bit more money the more I'm on now. And um, yeah, we'll we'll see what they say. Before that happens, July 18th, UFC Fight Night. Fight Island, Montel Jackson, you, Yas Island, Abu Dhabi. It's going to be great. Thank you, Brett, for the time. Enjoy the the fight. Enjoy your experience, man, in Abu Dhabi. I'm going to be packed in the Factor 50 sunscreen. But, yeah, I'm good, man. I can't wait. <laughs>